just pray. Father, we just come this morning. We thank you, Father. We just pray that you'd move and, and each one of our hearts. And Father, open our hearts and minds to understanding and revelation of God's word. And Father, this morning, first of all, we repent of allowing other things to come in and flood in. Maybe even set up mindsets and strongholds. And we accept these as truths. And really, when the truth is maybe spoken, we can't see it because we've put up barriers that the truth can't get through. We just pray, Lord, open our hearts and open our minds. And Father, just pray that we would be open to hear your word and pray for an understanding heart. And we just, Jesus could say, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. And I want to pray this morning. The Spirit of the Lord's upon me, and it's now to be the preacher, and thank you for that. See, this morning, I want to say a couple of wee things, verses. This, but one was found in Second Timothy 1, verse 15. Now, if I hadn't told you this verse, a lot of people, what are you studying for? Well, I study the Bible. What for? If you'd asked me years ago, what would I study the Bible for? Study the Bible to see your wisdom. You understand things. And you know this here, if you go to Second Timothy 1, verse 15, Second Timothy 1, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself what? Approved unto God. You know, not that I know very much about it. If I started working in the old, in the old dress in this place and say something happened and the boys come back and say, well, where's your approval? Who approved this elected new place? And that the way it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. You need this approval. Do you need God's approval to do things? Mm -hmm. Do you need God's approval before you do things? Did you know that? Or did you know? Can I ask you a question? How many has preached the, how many has preached the gospel? Can I ask you a question? Who sent you to do it? Who approved you to do it? Right? I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. Study to show thyself approved. Now listen. The next one I'll show you is Acts 2 verse 22. This is talking about Jesus. Acts 2 verse 22. Now you don't understand, or maybe you do, when you put your trust in something or something or some person, and all of a sudden as that person doesn't turn out to be the person you thought or the system or whatever it is, and then you've lost trust. And it's very, very hard to trust other people and other things again then. But if you go to Acts 2, verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth was a man approved of God. What was Jesus? Who was Jesus? Jesus of Nazareth was approved of God, could I tell you this? There's someone you can depend on for him. For God has approved this man, and he was a man. And Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Now, you know, by miracles, everybody said that by miracles, which God did by him. You know, he was approved by God. Study to show thyself approved. <laughs> Here's a man. And you see, if you read here, when right here, you'll read when he comes along and he says this, follow me. Why would you follow him? Because in Acts 2.10, this person, you can trust. Now, we can show you this. I quote a verse there. If you go to Romans 10, verse 15. See, for the true gospel, you need God's approval to preach it. Well, that's what the Bible says. Romans 10, verse 13. I am not here to say faults with anyone or anything. I'm just trying to say, bring before you what God's word says. And there's no one I'm asking for me to, and I hope I don't bring it across that way, to pull anything down or saying against anyone. Romans 10, verse 15. And you read 14. 30. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's dispensation of grace. 
whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Did I ask you a question? Remember I asked you, how many should preach in the gospel and they have never been sent? Well, you're probably preaching the wrong gospel. How do you preach the mystery of the gospel unless you have God's approval and be sent? You'll find that in where? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Now listen, I don't know about you, but you'll never hear that verse very much mentioned. How shall you preach except you be sent? Because see, if you're sent, there's a commission, an anointing, an appointment. Now, I'm trying to tell you this four or five weeks. You have God's approval. Can you imagine this? Coming in here and turning in and saying, the queen sent me, she's dead. The king sent me. Here's me, take on. But if you know you've been sent, and everybody still doesn't want to receive you, does it matter? No, I'm just saying this. I said it would be a birthday. Where did say it would be? He said, um, I can't even think of my mind. But listen, that's the way I show you this now. I'll go show you another. So that's Jesus, approved of God. Right? And he comes along and says, Follow me. And then I told you there with the gospel. I said it would be the gospel. It's Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. Now, Paul came to the other believer and says, Would you pray for me? That I would have boldness to go forth and speak. The, and open, that I would open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul was sent to preach, preach the mystery of the gospel. As for me, the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, listen, I could stay there and I could, and I've done it, it's not be by the mystery of the gospel. But listen, Listen, what we're going to say here. There's other Gospels out there. Are they the mysteries that have been preached? No. That's terrible. You said, no. What? 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3 and 4. I fear this by any means, as the serpent be Miguel leave through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, so Paul and you, Paul did not preach to Jesus that these other people have preached. Okay? What do you mean? Paul had the revelation of the mystery of Christ. And when Paul was sent, he went with the mysteries. And he preached Christ and the mysteries of Christ to the people. Right? Next verse. For he that cometh preached another whom we have not preached. Next feedback. Or if you receive another spirit which we have not received. And listen to what we're saying here. There's other people, maybe there's people online here, and they go to other places. And they don't understand, they're hearing another gospel, which I'll say in that verse there. And if you can accept all them other gospels, you have accepted that other spirit. And that allows you to accept everything that they say. And by the way, you will probably not be able to tap in to revelation knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. Because you have accepted this other spirit. If anyone comes and preaches another Jesus, then we've not preached, or and you receive another spirit, the spirit of the word, instead of the spirit of God. Now listen, our families have come and been tapped into them. And then you come and speak the mystery of the gospel. And then maybe, maybe they've got saved. You know, I, I am not trying to pick up on any, any denomination right here. I'm trying to say over the years, this has been going on. I'm going 
there's a, two or three or four of them say it's quite good. Would you like Jesus? I said, I don't think that's 25, 30 years. And they take it out and they get people to sign the paper. And then another one, ask Jesus into your heart. That's not scripture. But that's another gospel. Then there's another one. Get your child infant baptized. And this child is now born again. It's not scripture. It's not the gospel Paul preached. And it's not the mystery of the gospel. And by the way, I'm I'm going to sound my bad here, but listen, then people are not saved unless they've been saved by the gospel. The Paul preached. But if we agree with they are saved, on them I was saying on Friday night, then you accept all the blessings that belong to those who are now in Christ. <clears throat> you know, there's a problem here. I'm going to try and show you out we said now too. So here's the key. You make sure you have received the true gospel. And don't receive anything other than the true Jesus and the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're accepting that Jesus here is just him and his man. as the spirit of man. Jesus is man. But God has highly exalted him. And God has sovereign, has God's sovereign authority and all the world and all the religions believe, mostly and believe in a God, Jehovah. But none of them will accept that God has delegated all authority to his son after he went to the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father has delegated all authority. Matthew 28, verse 18. Philippians 2, verse 18. 8 to 11. And you read in 1 Corinthians 15 to 24, you read that Christ must reign, the Lord Jesus Christ must reign. And today we, the church, should be lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what that does? That overthrows all these other things that other people are not believing in. Because you know why? I'm going to look at a word in a wee minute or two. One's called subverted, one's called overthrow. And I want to show you a wee thing here first. So here we've got Jesus approved. And I'm maybe that I read the verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. And I was talking about Paul here. Remember Paul? Well, you looked at 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. And you need this verse. Right. But we were allowed of God to be put in trust for the gospel. Does God allow everyone to be put in trust for the gospel? Oh man, oh man, we come here and we'll allow you to. Read it in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. But we, but as we were allowed of God, so God approved us. What to do? To be put in trust with the gospel. Amplified. New heaven. New heaven, right? Uh, right, yeah, right? New heaven. Right? New heaven. First Thessalonians. Do you need to be approved to preach the gospel? I'm going to read the verse. Now, every, every, other people come along. And they will tell you these gospels are preaching. Now you come and do this. But ask your question. Has God approved you to do? Has God allowed you? Has God sent you? No, I never heard that before. But you tell me. Do you need to see now why their own message is out? Right, First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. Would, I can find it here in the New Living. The thing wasn't in the Bible. And you see that word approved. Study to be approved of God. And first Thessalonians 2, verse 4. See what I mean? For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Never I told you on here, a few had a electric problem in here. By right and by law, you're supposed to get somebody who's approved to come and check out your electrics. God has done exactly the same thing with his message. 
and we never have never seen that. And here's a man here. If you go to uh, Romans 11, verse 13. Romans 11, verse 13. Maybe. Romans 11, verse 13. A lot of people think maybe, he, why are you not doing this? Or why are you not putting people in? Because I want you to be a true God. And God to send you. And if God trusts you with a message, can I tell you this? Then you will see the moon. Romans 11, verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Who was Paul? Paul knew he was a sent one, approved and allowed of God to be sent to preach the mysteries of God. And it says here, I magnify not my own, mine office. Paul was what? An apostle of the Gentiles. And you'll read this with Paul. And he comes along and he says this a lot of things. And I'm going to show you these verses. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1 and 2. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Could I, could I tell you anything here? I don't want to name any churches, but a certain churches believe in following Peter as the rock. And all over the years, they have preached and then they have preached the gospel. But it doesn't say in there to follow Peter. And Paul's coming along and says this, Be ye followers of me, even as I am at Christ. The sovereign God has delegated all authority to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I read on the board there. And I've showed you the verses. And now the Lord Jesus Christ, by the, has, for the apostles of the church, sent ones to what? To tell the body of Christ to follow these ones. And Paul is saying that here. First verse, be ye followers of me, even also as I am of Christ. And now I praise you, Brown, that, excuse me, you remember me in all things. And keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. Some of them have said, keep the traditions. So Paul came and preached a message. Could I retract over there? He was approved. He was sent. And he was allowed by God to preach the gospel, the mystery of the gospel. And he started to preach the mysteries of God. Does that only sense here now? Now, we, I won't go and try and, as I go along here, when you're in Corinthians, go to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Wherefore, I beseech ye, be ye followers of me. There's only two people. You'll read from the beginning of Matthew to Revelations. You're told to follow. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and Paul. Now, listen, you look through it yourself. And these men were approved, and I've read the verses. And they were sent by God. Jesus was the apostle and high priest of our confession. He received verse 1. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. And I'm sure if you know this, he was approved. And he was allowed. And he was sent to speak for us. And he comes along today and he says, Be ye followers of me, for I am sent for to edify and build up the body of Christ. That's the sent one. A sent one is one who's approved and allowed if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, when we're here, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ. Now, these sent ones are the ministers of Christ. Now, if you look into that word there, ministers, you'll find out there are under rowers hidden to row and keep the ship from them. And I forget the Greek word there. But listen to this here. And stewards of the mysteries of God. 
1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But God knows these men beforehand. Before he allowed them into that, do that. But well, what, what's the problem here? There's other people have come along. And I'm just going to try and show you this in a second or two. There's other people who come along. And just see how I've got on this one. I don't think it's more than maybe yes, passing this message. But the simple reason is, the Lord Jesus comes along. When I seen this years ago, the Lord says, follow me. Matthew 4, verse 19. Come after me. Maybe I made saying this. Let me see. And see, there's other people who come along. You come and follow us. And we follow the law and the prophets. Us making our fundamental. Paul was never told that. Although he was steeped in the law and the prophets. If you go to where Matthew 4 19, just read this verse. Follow me. The Lord says to these 12 men, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And then he said, Dylan, follow me. I'm going to tell you, I have pointed to you already in Acts 2.22, here's a man who was approved of God. Now, Paul was the same. And I never finished reading with all these messages that Paul said he'd follow me. What's this now? If you go now with me to the gospel that Paul preached uh, very quickly, and I was speaking this two or three times last time I was speaking to you, I'll go to one place. It's found in First Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Sorry, 13 and 14 and 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit on belief of the mystery of the gospel. Belief of the truth. Next verse. For, the, for unto he called you by our gospel. Now Paul's saying this very, very highlightly here. He called you by our gospel. So when you hear the right message of the gospel, the mystery of the gospel, the gospel that Paul preached, you're, whenever the Holy Spirit has done a work in your heart, he's calling you, you need to hear the truth. For to be able to come, as the Holy Spirit is drawing you. That's the next verse. For unto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the believers has, has obtained. You have obtained the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll read the next verse. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught by me, whether by word or by our epistle. I hate them back to guess. Here's a man who was approved of God. And it was sent by God. He was entrusted with the mysteries of God. And he comes along now and he starts, he says, You follow me. But God has shown me, and here's, here's our gospel, 1 Corinthians 15. For I delivered unto you also that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins. Pray, and he rose again. And he was saying, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 3. And then it, Paul comes along. And it says this, and I read Romans 10, verse 13. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, shall we say, Paul started to preach Christ in all his fullness and who he is today after his resurrection. And that was the mysteries, that he came and he spoke the body of Christ. Sorry if you can over this. He was appointed, he was allowed, and he was sent for this job. But we, the body of Christ, have maybe, some of the professing body of Christ has followed Peter. And built their whole doctrinal thing around Peter. Some others have followed the law and the prophets. Go with me to Luke 16, verse 16. See, you can understand this. I was listening to people who were saying some of that stuff I'm telling you. And I went to the Bible, and I was sure I didn't tell you all. 
Luke 16, verse 6. The law and the prophets were up to John the Baptist. After this, the kingdom is preached. Now listen. And every man presses into it. Now if you went to certain places today, the they would still be teaching the law and the prophets. But Paul says, no, I want you to follow me. Yet I read the verses there. Now if you go to First Philippians chapter, do you understand this? Nobody come and present it. That's the way I'm presenting this to you this morning. I mean, I had to go through all this stuff and see this stuff. And the Lord started to show me that's wrong. And all I done was try to follow what God said. But what we I show you verses come out of my mind. Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews one. Verse 1, God who at some times in David's manner spake in the, la in the past times to the fathers by the prophets. So listen, the prophets were there to guide. When? In some times. Right? Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He hath whom he hath appointed. Here you are again, approved and appointed. Heir of all things. Remember I told you the Father delegated all authority to the Son. Next us read that. By whom he also made the words. Who in the brightness of his, his glory and the express of his image uphold all things by the word of his power. Whom he hath by himself purchased soon sat down. And there you are. There's the proven of the Son. And this poor man comes along, who was sent by the Holy Spirit, but he was also approved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he comes along, and if you go to Philippians chapter 3, now the problem is, if you've listened to the law and the prophets, and you still listen to that, if you're still listening to under the law instead of under grace, if you're still listening to under Peter, and following that, you'll never see this. And that's what this does. It blinds you from seeing the reality of the truth. Now, if you go to Philippians chap chapter 3, this poor man comes along again and says this. Listen, can I read verse 1? Finally, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. I re sorry, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. Indeed, it is not grievous, but as for me, it is safe. Beware of dogs and beware of evil workers. Beware of the concession. The concession. For ye are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any of my thinketh that he were of might of trust in the flesh, I more. Paul was steeped in Judaism and the law. God meets this man. God takes this man and he shows him now this is not the way I want you to want to follow. Next verse. Concerning zeal, and he tells you all there about concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, though I, those I counted loss for Christ. Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and to count them as done, that I may win Christ. So, I'm sorry for having to read all these things, but I want to show you a thing. This man was steeped in this teaching. And this doctrinal law teaching. And he meets the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on me about, I said, Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For him I suffer the loss of all things and count them, I ain't read it before, count them, but done. I may man Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which is through the faith of, faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So here's what Paul's saying there. 
the law will bring a righteousness where you live a, think you'll live a righteous life. And God wants to impart to you the righteousness comes by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's an important. I want to show you this word. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made com com conformable unto his death. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. I'm speaking not very many. Paul had one plan. Be ye followers of me and follow, as my example, you follow me. If you go to verse uh, 17 first, right? right? Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Paul was given us as a pattern and as his own to follow. And Paul prize was only one thing. Now what we show you this if I can bring this across. Verse 12. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect or mature, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which Christ apprehended me for. Can I ask you a question? What did Christ apprehend you for? The same thing for that you would run and follow God's teachings the way He's uh, people He's approved in this dispensation and follow by their example the path and walk that they on. Next week, now we'll try and read this here. Right, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one, that one thing I do, what's what I'm doing here. See all the stuff and all he learned. That's one thing I do. I said it all the same. See, he did not do that. He could not walk. And he could not walk in the revelation of the mystery of God. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are which are behind me. On reaching forth for these things. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. And so he's let go. He let go all this other stuff and all this steep and all religion and all this stuff that he would make the high prize of calling of the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. But listen. This man was approved. This man was allowed. This man was sent. What for? To bring to the body of Christ the mystery of Christ. And every apostle has the same calling in the church. To bring for the body of Christ the mysteries. And they've been sent, approved. Now listen. We, the body of Christ, have rejected the sent ones. And a lot of us are still holding on to the old stuff and old teachings. Yet on. And we are telling you this. If you're in Christ, there's a teaching in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Because all things come by you. Now listen. So here we've got I've tried to break it out. You can see there, well, roughly, Law and the Prophets, Peter. Okay, then, you get the Old Testament, the Old Testament teaching, and then you get the Lord Jesus, and then you get Paul here. Okay, Paul says, you be a follower of me, and follow my example. You see that there? If I could bring this across in the camp, I'd love to be able to throw this on the screen in the Greek to show you. It's there, but, like, let me see bring the verse. But, let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, that word will be mature, be thus minded. Be the way that Paul was minded. See that verse 15. And if any other ways be minded, God shall reveal even this to you. So you start to follow the teaching of Paul, and God will reveal to you the revelation of his father. What's he bet? Nevertheless, nevertheless, whereto we have attained, let us walk by the same rule, and let us mind the same thing. See that word walk there? I mean, he asked Roy, there, is that Stucci? So, Stucci and then, no? Yeah. 
stitching. But if you go here into this word stitching and the walk under walk and the vines we have here, and you read this word, most of the Greek doesn't really explain it too well. Where do you see this one? When? Walk. I'm looking for the walk. Let me see this. W A K. Just bear with me. Here we have it all found inside. Now, okay. A K L M. Right. Walk. Right. We're nearly there. Right. Walk. Number four, stitching. Now, you can read all this through, and there's a wee bit in this here. It is what it is used of walking by the rule express, verse 14 and 15. It is used. Uh, so I, I also know it's six. In Philippians 3, verse 16, the reference is to the course pursued for the believer who makes the prize of the high calling. Let's go. His ambition. Number five. And that's what Paul was saying here. I have made the high prize the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ and my, my ambition. Now I want you to do the same. Follow me as I follow Christ. And that word walk there, and there's two other walks there. Now listen, I'm not going to aim every day this because I can't put it online. But what's this? Philippians chapter, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even. They are the image of the cross of Christ. You might think they're doing everything for God. But Paul says, no, they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. See that word walk right there. What walks that? Verse 17. I meant in many walk of whom I told you. See it there or not? Sorry, sorry. Is there, anything, is there anything there to say what that walk is? Just roughly to show you in it. Walking anyway, probably anyway. I call him. Common walk. Paul wasn't walking common walk. Paul was walking a distinct one way. That's the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. On this other walk, people are walking doing what everybody else is moving down. What's this we've been here now? You send this destruction to dodge the belly and his glory and their shame and mind earthly things. And that's the, there's, three, there's three verses in there. And then it says, we see verse 16. Let us walk by the same rule. And then verse 17. Mark them which walk so as you have. You see that verse 16? It's a different Greek word. Even number 17 is maybe a different Greek word. If I remember years ago I studied this. I'm asking Roy to just to verify it. See that word there in verse 17? Is that stucky? Stucky? Yes. And what's verse 16? Which you? Different, different walk. March in military rank. See? Paul wants you to march in military rank the way he was. Not running about common doing all this other stuff. And walk, walk as the prize of the high calling is the call for your life. In other words, let everybody else do what they want. Here's what I'm doing. Not supposed life. And that's what he's saying. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Right? I'm trying to pull this out of my mind. What is Galatians 2? I maybe get the wrong verse here. Galatians 2, verse 14. Let's see if that's the same. Right. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, Galatians 2, verse 14. But when I saw, I am going to have to ask Roy again. When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, I said unto Peter, Peter wasn't walking according to the truth of the gospel. That's the word, Orthopedio. See? And if you look into that word there, you'll ortho, 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 you'll read this. A walk that's an example and a pattern to follow. They walk not according to the truth of the gospel. On Peter, who some people build their church foundation on. Right? Walk not 
the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before them all, if you've been a Jew, live with stuff from the man of Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compel us down the Gentiles to live with the Jews? So Peter was sliding back into the law and the prophets and circumcision and all this stuff. And he wasn't walking according to the truth of the gospel. And Paul asked that. Apostle of the Gentiles came along and confronted Peter. Peter, you're wrong. So listen, Peter, Paul had apostolic authority to do that. Now if you go, and this is in my mind again, go you to the last verse in chapter 13 of Hebrews, maybe. And later on in life, Peter, maybe Peter, like second Peter, the job of the Holy Spirit, second Peter. And find this verse, right. Verse 15. And accounted the long suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ as salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written these things. Here's the man, Paul, that rebuked Peter for what on disorder and not right, according to the truth of the gospel. And Peter comes along and says, This man has been given the wisdom. And he highly recommends. Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto us, as also in all his epistles speak in them of th these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are of the unlearned and, un and unstable rest, as they do also with the scriptures, unto their own destruction. Well, Peter had to come along and say, Peter, Paul has been given a wisdom. He had the wisdom of the revelations of the mysteries of God. And he was able to come along and say to Peter, Peter, you're wrong here. You're not walking the way we, as the body of Christ, should be walking. Right. Oh, dear. Right. Could I take you now to two other verses that are quite challenging? Right. Would I be wrong to say, when you go to Ephesians chapter 2, but Paul, who was the apostle of the Gentiles, who was asking us the body of Christ to follow him. I have to lay this out in a form to show you what we have done wrong. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul says this from 1 to 11. It says, Paul says, If you've heard of the dispensation of God which is given to me, for you. So there's a dispensation of God given to Paul the sent one, to give to the body of Christ. Now we, mostly in the body of Christ, have rejected that. But if you go to Colossians 1, verse 25 and 26. 25 and 26. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you. And you need these five words. To fulfill the word of God. There's a dispensation of God, grace, sorry, God of grace given to me for you, the rest of the body of Christ, to fulfill the word of God. Next verse, even the mystery which has been hidden from all ages. So this mystery was never revealed before. And Paul's now going to show you this mystery. And from generations, never, ever, ever revealed, only revealed right now. But now it's made manifest to his sense. Who's it man manifest to? His sense. To him, God, but no one what is this, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, has come to now live in you. This mystery was hidden from all ages and from all generations. And Paul comes now and speaks this mystery. And this, all I'm just saying to you is that changes. Christ, the Godhead, now lives inside you. Now, we'll show you this. I'm just uh, going to go you to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. Whereby, I'll read verse 3. How that by revelation he made on to, made on to be the mystery. As I for, I wrote in a few words. So here's another mystery. Read the book. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge 
in the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ was never, ever revealed in any old age. That's not going to be. That the Gentiles okay, were in other ages was not made known, verse 5, unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets. So the Spirit of God has revealed the mystery of Christ in you unto Paul and Paul's revealing it. And that is normal. He's revealing this, the mystery of Christ. And then one, and what I'm trying to highlight this morning is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ was hidden. It's a mystery. Now, unless we have insight into them divine mysteries, we will never see these truths. I'm not sure why the church is preaching all this other stuff. But listen to this here. Hey, four, verse 12. We'll hear that. Right, what is this? What is this? Now, I would rather not be up here standing, preaching these things. I'm telling the truth. I would rather not. Sometimes I wish I'd never seen some of this stuff. Because all I get is from everybody around me and all my connections, because they go to another church and they listen to another gospel and they receive another spread and they totally reject everything and then they come and say, just boom, against me. Don't worry, my back's work built to the burden, don't worry, but it breaks my heart. My bit of honest to tell you guys, it breaks to my heart to see people deceived. I mean, it breaks my heart. And you must nobody cares. These people are preaching these other messages, then these people are not saved, and nobody cares. And all they're doing is gathering up numbers, and they're deceiving people. They're deceiving people. What's this? I'm going to show you a couple of verses here. Again, I can't bring you up in the vines, but I want to show you this verse. What does our own teaching do? Go you to Acts 15, verse 24. For as much as you've heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. What, what they trouble you with? Words. Subverting your soul. In the last 10 or 15 minutes, could I turn, try and explain to you what does it mean to it, for your soul subverted? Acts 20, 15, verse 24. Saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law. So when somebody comes along and teaches you that wrong teaching, they are subverting your soul. Your spirits will hopefully saved. But they're subverting your soul. So what does it mean to subvert your soul? I'm going to go into the vines here in the Greek to get the word subvert. I can't really bring this across the way I'd love to bring it. It's R-S, subvert. What does it mean to have a, have a subverted soul? Subdue, subject, subject. Here I am now. Stumped. Subvert, S U B V E R T. Right, here we are. To break down this Greek word, it's called anaskizio, primarily to pack up bags. Or a military point to dismantle a town. So what does it mean to have your soul subverted? Dismantle it. A few years ago, I used to watch an old thing with pirates. And pirates came along. And the pirates, they plundered the ship. And left and took everything out of the ship. And that's the wrong teaching. They will subvert your soul. And they will plunder you. Did I tell you this? The unsettling of the subverting of the souls of the believers. With the wrong teaching. And that's what's been on for years. And then when you're subverted, you go and you teach and you subvert other people what they've subverted you with. That other spread. 
you receive other, the other Jesus, you receive the other spirit, and then you receive another gospel, and then you just go and just do exactly whatever else is there. You, you're reckoning. You don't think, you don't know your name. See this verse here. If you read the note, note here on Royal Throne, the teaching sheet there, you'll read another note below. It says, Anna Tripo. And it's the word for overthrow. Watch what I have here. I have what, a coaster. And I have a thingy behind the pan. Here's what they do. You see what I've done? They overthrow you. The wrong teaching will overthrow you. The wrong teaching will plunder you. The wrong teaching will mean that you'll go and start and beat that other teaching. That other stuff. If you did in these Greek words, that's what that means. Now, if you look up the word overthrow, I mean, it happens from the head there. It's L -G -L -M -N -O -O -P, M -N -O. Overthrow. Overflow. Overthrow. Yes, right. here we are. First, second Thessalonians, second Timothy 2, verse 14. Let's read this word over. So, so how did they, how did they, how did they subvert or run to the house? By wrong words, by wrong teaching, by wrong, oh, oh they're out of the Bible, but they're out of their own place. They're out of a different, a different place to teach it. Or you've listened, or I've listened to somebody else, and you're just repeating what they say. But you're subverting the hearers. Right. If you go to, where does it go to? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. I'd rather not speak in this back. If these things put their memories, charging them before the Lord Jesus, they strive not about words. Stop arguing over different doctrines of words. Because you plunder the believers around you and you overturn them, you overturn their faith. That's what Paul's saying. And over the years, we in the body of Christ have listened to different and wrong teaching on Gospels. And we've and, and done and we have followed that. And we've overthrew the house of God. And children and believers. And then they go home and they overthrow their houses. Never mind. And it will break your heart when you really see what we have done to the body of Christ. Go to say and come again. If these things put their members, charge them before the Lord, that they strive not about words, no, but to the certain of the hearers. These words subvert the hearers. See, I was in a meeting one night, and uh, I was preaching the week before, and then this old man was preaching. The next thing he came and started talking about different things. And this old man started and asking questions and different things, and it wasn't good. And this is what happened here. So I tell you what's happening. And I says, look, could you, could you, some of them asked me, said, would you stop this? You're breaking the unit of the spirit in this place. And by the way, if you keep breaking it, you're going to subvert all the young people around your ears, and you're going to destroy it. You're going to destroy these people. And that's what we have done in the body of Christ. We have destroyed the body of Christ by wanting our opinions to so forward. And not realising but our opinion doesn't matter unless God has approved us and allowed us to speak it. And that's what's happened, please. That's what's happened all over the years through all the different denominations and all the different teaching. And that's why they reject the apostle that was told in the church. And listen, Satan didn't do it. We allowed it to happen. We empowered him to come in to do it. Now see this here. If you go to another word, if I can go back to subvert, go try and do this with S F N N M O P U R S. There's another word here. That's the same. But it hasn't worked. So S U B B Q R T. Subvert. Okay. Now something on 
I'm not supposed to. Right, we see us. There's another word here that's for overthrow. For others, overthrow. I want to go to all, first of all, to number three. Ek stribio. Ek stribio. And that's found in Titus 3, verse 11. But I want to look this up and some of the word pervert number four. Right? And I had to get here. M M P Q R S P. That's why, if I could do this in the veins, we would just to our time, but prefer. So when we allow the peers to it, we overthrow them and we pervert the message. That's what's happened all over the years. The message of the mysteries of God have been perverted by allowing to follow different things. H I J K L M M O P or A P E R. Yeah, yeah. She entered in those shows. Yes, I prefer. Uh, this word is ex trivial. Nah, it even sounds like ex trivial. Strap mm-hmm. To turn inside out. Remember, I showed you I'd done the flip of the coaster. To turn inside out and strip you what you believe. And then you go and start to speak this other stuff and you strip other people. What's this? It is found in Titus 3, verse 11. In the RV, it's perverted. In the AV, it's subverted. Titus 3, verse 11. So, I tried to show you this morning that God approved Jesus and God approved the apostolic teaching of the church and how Paul was approved and sent and chosen. But then there's other ones here. The Book of Man. And they subvert the message. And they followed the law and the prophets, then they followed Peter, and they put in all this stuff all over the years. And the word and the word and vines. The word and vines. E K S T R U. It's under the word pervert. Extrep- oh, that's the other one. Wait, no, I'm going to read the type of Stephen. X strepio. S S T R E P H O. To turn inside out, to change entirely. You got a new one, eh? Yeah. Titus 3, verse 11. Knowing that he that is such is subverted. There's people come along and they're not going to let go of all the stuff and teaching they have. And they're not for changing. And they're coming out to wreck and wreck the unity. They're subverted. And they pervert. And that's what's happened. What if we but we've allowed it to happen because we didn't follow God's order and God's approval. Mm-hmm. What's this? I could just bring the SD. Right. There's a verse in Lamentations 3, verse 36. Lamentations 3, verse 36. I seen this about two weeks ago as I was studying. And every time I go into these verses, it breaks, it nearly breaks me when I read this. When I realize what has happened to the body of Christ and what was meant to happen, what we were meant to do for Lamentations. Don't my Lamentations. Mm-hmm. 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 Let it help me by the Mark. D36. Lamentations, the right. I want to read 35 to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the most high to subvert a man in his cause the Lord approves not to 
to search for a man in his cause. The Lord does not prove this. What does we know? Right? Now, I think I've covered most of them things, but I'll show you this week, thank you. Go you now with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, which I already quoted, but I want to show you this. Go, first of all, to Titus. So all this wrong teaching, what does it do? It subverts and overthrows. Right. Titus. One, verse 11. Now the elder was meant to be there to teach and hold fast the faithful word, verse 9. And these other people who come in, they are to say, look, that's wrong. That he may be able to, by sound up, and both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. Stand up and say, that's wrong. That's wrong. This is right. Now that's not done. Whose mouth must be stopped. Sorry, verse 10. For they are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially there for that circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses. When this is allowed to happen, the whole house and everything is destroyed. Now, what's this? Teaching things they ought not. But the, the elder there, Paul sent Titus, set up, put a man there, who knows the mysteries of God, who knows how to follow the apostolic teachings, that he may stop this happening. But that has never happened over the years. So we have set elders up who feed and follow what we want to teach. Right? I'm trying to finish here. See if you go to Titus, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. I read it earlier on. I can't remember the word is. Right. See this word here of things which put their members, charging them before the Lord, they strive not about worse than, but to the subverting of the hearers. See that word subverting there. Roy, do you see what that big word scroll there? Let me do this again. Catastrophe. In the Hebrew, catastrophe. Is that where we get the word catastrophe? Yeah. So the church is in a place of catastrophe. Mm -hmm. And that is what's happened and allowed the false Jesus, the false spirit, the spirit of the word, and the false gospel. Mm -hmm. Listen to this here. Here's the key. We know the real message. Let us go forth fearfully in peace. The real message. First Thessalonians chapter two. Sorry, I first Thessalonians chapter two, verse two. I'm unfinished here. I don't mean I finish, I mean I finish for the day. Read in there. Huh? First Thessalonians two, verse two. Go we'll read in verse one. For yourself, brother, know our entrance into you, and that it was not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know at Philippi, we, we were bold in our, to our inner God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. See, when you speak the right gospel, can I tell you this? You're going to come up against contention. Does that stop you? For our exhortation was not out of deceit, nor uncleanness, nor unguide, but as we were allowed of God, to, bid in, to be put in trust with the gospel, not as pleasing men, but God. Father, I'm just going to pray. Father, I pray, Lord, that we would fearlessly go forth and hold up the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ and the mysteries of God. And Father, that the Lord Jesus Christ will be magnified. And Father, we thank you, Father, for the revelation truth as you lead and guide. Pray for those believers that they would repent and turn away father mm -hmm. and turn away and get a revelation of following the Lord Jesus Christ and following the apostolic teaching that Paul preached and for us the church and those who are sent and we pray Lord we pull down the strongholds that have been built up 
And we think of Jeremiah. He was sent to overthrow. Never mind these people are overthrowing other people. Jeremiah was sent to overthrow what these other people were building up. And he was sent to the nations. And he was sent to pull down kingdoms. And Father, we thank you that our message has this to pull the strongholds down of 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. And bringing into, forget the word, bringing in and pulling down all these strongholds that the knowledge of God would have full course. And Father, we just pray this now. And we thank you for everyone. We take authority over principalities and powers. We bind them. We take authority over sickness. We command healing. We command wholeness. And Father, we command wholeness, never mind our body. We pray wholeness for the body of Christ. And that Father, your name will be magnified and lifted up. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.